Let's do a quick kind of review of everything about factoring. Um, because you have a test coming up that's over all the different factoring kinds. And so first off, this review, if you want to play the actual game, you're going to um, look at those and like roll two dice and say, oh, okay, so three and a two, and then that's the problem that you will do, okay? But as you are solving through any of these problems, you're factoring it, you're breaking it down into a multiplication problem, you basically have these processes to use. The first thing I want you to always check for is, is there a greatest common factor? Is there a way that I can write this problem, rewrite it into a distributive property question? And it could be three things that are being distributed. It could be, you know, whatever. But kind of your key on this is, if you look across a problem and you see that all three pieces have something in common, for example, like this one right here, I can see that they all have an X in common. And then even the 36, the 18, and the 24, it just at first glance, I can tell that they're all even. And so I know they'll be divisible by two, but really if I start thinking a little bit more, I'm seeing that there is a six and an X in common with all of these. And so then I'm gonna figure out, well, what would I have to distribute that six X to to make those, okay? So that's always what you wanna check for first, is do they have something in common all the way across? They won't always. Here, I don't see a common factor all the way across. So if you don't see a common factor, right? That's the first thing you're gonna check for. You're gonna try and see, well, is it a trinomial? Does it have three simple pieces, okay? And then we have two kind of categories of trinomials we have to consider. In both situations, your trinomials are gonna break down into two binomials. This one is as well, it's gonna break down into two different two-termed pieces. If it's a simple one, you get a lot of uh, leniency here, okay? Because you know to get an x squared at the beginning, you can just start both of them out with an x times an x. And so really all you have to do is figure out the number at the back. If there is a number in front of x squared, then you don't necessarily know what these two front pieces are gonna be. And so that's where we have to go through that full box process and say, oh, okay, it's gonna add to make the middle and it's gonna multiply to make the front times the back and actually follow that process, okay? So when you look at a trinomial like this one, we said, well, it doesn't have a greatest common factor. It has three pieces, that means it's a trinomial. The fact that there's not a number in front of that x squared, I can skip straight to just saying, oh, so my binomials are x and x, and I just have to figure out what numbers need to go at the back, okay? As opposed to this one, there's not a greatest common factor all the way across, so I can't simplify my problem that way. There are three terms. It follows that x squared, then x, then a number, so this is where I would actually have to like set up my box and work backwards. Um, and you can go back and rewatch those notes, guys, where, where you do like the first term in the first box and the last term in the last box. And then you've got to figure out what these two would be. So that they add together to make a positive four and multiply together to make a negative 12, right? Go back and watch those if you're having no idea what I'm talking about right now. And so... Then the, the last category, the newest category, is if it's a difference of squares. So in order to be this last one, which to me is by far the easiest one, you have to have the difference, okay? You have to have subtraction between your two pieces. It can only be two. And you have to have perfect squares. So like something that can multiply A times A and B times B. So when I start looking through this, I know it's only gonna have two pieces. So if I look down here, I see two pieces. It is the difference of a perfect square because x times x will make x squared and seven times seven will make 49. So it has to be something times itself to make the first one and something times itself to make the back one, okay? And if that's the case, these are the ones that break down into one factor with a plus and one factor with a minus. The formula chart actually um, spells this out and says, oh, so A times A will make A squared in the front and B times B is whatever multiplies together to make that back piece, that B squared, okay? So like 
x times x and seven times seven for the example off the, off the problem. And then here's how it works to really get practice. So the more of these that you are able to practice factoring, the better prepared you will be. The answer key is on the back. So like, let's say, what did I say earlier? Three, two, if you answer that question, if you look on the back or the second page, if you didn't print it, you're gonna go to three and two, and there's the answer to that problem. And so I would encourage you to, if you don't get it right, figure out why, right? Figure out what happened, um, really pick that apart and, and make sure you know what you're doing because it's your test grade. And so you have lots of um, notes you can go back and watch. You can look and kind of see what category that one fell into and go rewatch those and make sure that you are in good shape because that is the last grade we will take this six weeks, okay? All right, let me know if you have any issues or questions and I will be happy to help however I can.